So we've told you about the Modi-Trump relationship, the body language, it's all there, the optics are good, it's all buzzing, and we've told you about what uh, it could actually lead to in terms of the bilateral relationship. But what about the neighborhood? India continues to have a troubled neighborhood. What kind of an impact, if any, could a new Trump Sarkar have on India's neighborhood flashpoints? Let's first, of, co of course, take Pakistan. Trump has always had a tough stance as far as Pakistan is concerned. So Trump becoming president is definitely advantage India. Remember in 2019, when Trump was president, Trump was clear as far as India and its attacks on Balakot in Pakistan was concerned. It was clear that the messaging coming out from that Trump's administration was that India was defending itself and attacking terror. So anti-terror voices will uh, get strengthened thanks to Trump in his new avatar. Then you've got the China border, the border dispute between India and China, which has lately seen, uh, you know, small steps towards a larger resolution, hopefully. Trump has been tough on China, whether it is diplomatically, whether it is strategically, whether it is through trade, and whether it is through diplomacy. The fact is, as India and China try and create, uh, 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 you, know, you know, a more normalized relationship, Trump on India's side will definitely be advantage India. And finally, to a far smaller extent compared to Pakistan and China, is Bangladesh. Bangladesh, a country seen to have had a military coup, installing Mohammed Yunus as their new leader, presumably through the backing of the United States and the deep state. Well, Trump tweeted just six days ago about the fact that minorities are being persecuted in Bangladesh, making it very clear where he stands as far as the Yunus government in Bangladesh is concerned. So on all three aspects, whether Pakistan, Bangladesh or China, as far as India is concerned, a Trump Sarkar is advantage India. Gaurav Savant is with me live to uh, you know, dissect this just a little bit more. Uh, Gaurav, uh, you know, there have been frictions, there have been hurdles as far as India and the United States are concerned, even under a Trump administration. But on these broader aspects of national security issues, so, you know, most importantly, Pakistan and China, and to a smaller extent, Bangladesh, am I right in saying it's almost completely advantage India? It indeed appears to be given uh, the track record of uh, both the partnerships between India and the United States of America between 2016 and 20. And it's, it's borne out by facts on ground. Remember 2017 when the Chinese were advancing menacingly um, uh, on, on the North Sikkim front and around uh, Dolem. Uh, plateau. That was the time uh, that again America and India shared a lot of intelligence and those intelligence inputs helped India prepare better. Uh, there's a lot of uh, satellite intelligence shared uh, between uh, America and India all along the line of actual control. While India-America defense relationship and strategic relationship have always remained very strong uh, post-1999, whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans in power, but when it comes to radical Islamist terror, especially from Pakistan, the Republicans have been harder on Pakistan and Democrats to a very large extent have been softer as we've seen. Uh, and perhaps it's also because of the kind of support uh, that Pakistani Americans have given to the Democrats, uh, especially mm. Joe Biden. So that's where Donald Trump has been extremely hard on Pakistan state-sponsored uh, radical Islamist terror when he called out Pakistan as taking billions of dollar from, uh, dollars from America and being involved in the killing of Americans in Afghanistan or spreading terror. So that's where perhaps if that same policy continues, that's where we see Pakistan in the doghouse. Uh, you know, repair of military hardware yes. in Pakistan, getting giving new hardware to Pakistan, that may be uh, more difficult, especially at a time when India's strategic might is increasing. And that is where Pakistan is feeling the pinch. Even an organization like the BRICS, where Pakistan was hoping to make entry and could not do so in Kazan. As far as Bangladesh is concerned, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, given that big picture that went absolutely viral of Joe Biden hugging uh, Nobel laureate Professor Mohammed Yunus and radical Islamists uh, running the streets of Bangladesh, it's a big threat to India's security. It's a big threat to Hindus in Bangladesh. They're being persecuted day in and day out. And Donald Trump has called that out. Whether that was election speeches, but will it be followed up with action on ground? Remains to be seen, but Republicans assure us, um, uh, you know, whoever I've been speaking to, that Donald Trump, even in personal conversations, said, 
wherever Hindus are persecuted, I am standing with them. Yeah. That's what he's told them. Uh, point two, point three, even on an issue like Niger, Pannu and Canada, India, India has been pressing home that point. Given the personal chemistry or the lack of it between Trudeau and Trump, we know how that is likely to pan out. So yeah, overall, yeah. likely to be a win-win for India on virtually every front. There are challenges that will remain, but India is a big country, strong country. He's described Prime Minister Narendra Modi as a tough negotiator. So those negotiations will continue. Gaurav, I just wanted to dig in uh, uh, just briefly on that last point you made on, uh, you know, Khalistani terror under the Biden administration, which had weaponized the Gurupatwan Singh Pannu issue. It had become a diplomatic spat somewhat between India and the United States, even though the core of the strategic relationship has, of course, been, uh, you know, uh, very nicely insulated from the frictions. Uh, there is also the Trudeau aspect, like you just pointed out. Could you tell us a little bit more about how a Trump in the White House could qualitatively change that? You know, uh, one of India's apprehensions, um, and not officially shared but uh, discussed, was that Democrats uh, would, would, with their, you know, in, in some way, if I may, um, and especially towards the end of uh, Joe Biden's tenure, where perhaps the, the state was calling the shots and not as much the president, as some argue, um, was interfering or seen to be interfering in India's internal affairs um, uh, and even earlier. Remember the Citizenship Amendment Act? CA is not anti-Muslim, but that entire rhetoric that was spread that CA is anti-Muslim, uh, uh, people like uh, like uh, several Democrat uh, leaders, um, in, including uh, you know Kamala Harris, uh, they they had adopted a certain line. Whether it was yeah. CA or uh, Article 370, again India's internal affairs, no business for anyone to interfere in India's internal affairs, but they uh, sought to poke their nose in it, which India said is completely not done. But the Americans, um, uh, you know, tried to do that again with pannu he's a terrorist he's a declared terrorist when you're a strategic partner you go after those terrorists instead of encouraging them saying there are our citizens the, yeah. the, the burning down of the Indian consulate in San Francisco, you don't let that happen to a friendly country and yet America uh, permitted that to happen and Canada was even worse. So with Trump in White House, things are likely to ease up uh, on that front. Uh, that, that's what is the expectation, Shiv. We look forward to that because India and Canada have uh, otherwise very strong relations that have been completely ruined by one man who continues to be the Canadian Prime Minister. We'll have to see how uh, a Trump Sarkar actually impacts that. Gaurav, thanks very much for that.